Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about how we can give our classes friends. And when we talk about giving our classes friends, what we're saying is how we can give outside code access to a class's private stuff. Now, generally this is a bad idea, but if you have a really, really, really good reason to do so, you can do so. So you've got three options. You can make uh, an entire class a friend of a class. You can make a class's member function a friend of a class or you could even make a standalone function a member of a class. And again, a friend of a class is just some entity that can directly access your private stuff without having to go through the public interface, which can generally a bad idea, but we're gonna learn how you can do it anyway. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and create a class called shapes. And this class is going to have a public function that is going to simply take a square as a argument, and it's going to calculate and return the area of a square that gets passed to it. Now we're going to define class square right after that. And class square is going to have as its friend class shapes. But if you take a look right here with our class square, when the compiler goes to compile, it's not going to know about class square. So we have to do what's called a forward declaration, which it's kind of like a prototype for classes. And it's just telling the compiler that, yeah, um, I'm going to define this thing known as class square here in a second. So when you get to this line right here, and you're like, well, I don't know what class square is. You know, just trust me. Hold on. We're going to give you a definition here in a second. So let's take a look at our class square. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a private member, which we'll call side and we'll give it as part of its public interface, a constructor with a default argument. So we'll have something like this, double S equals zero. And then we'll use the initialization list here. So then we'll say aside S, all right. And then I'll add to it a accessor, which will simply return the side variable. So we'll have something like this, hit side, and we'll return side. Okay, now we're gonna want to give this find area function access to our side variable here. So that way the find area function can calculate the area of our square for us. So let's define function find area in class shapes. So it's going to return a double and it's part of class shapes. And the name of the function is find area. And we're going to pass it a constant square reference. And it's going to be const because it's not going to be a mutator. And we're making the parameter const because find area is just going to be calculating the area of the square. It's not going to update the contents of the square and we're going to make it const itself because it's not going to have any member variables that it should be updating. So to make this guy right here, an actual friend to where the shapes class find area method can access side here. Because take a look, if I say return s dot side times s dot side, so I have the red squiggles. It's because side is private, right? It's hidden from class shapes, but we're going to make it a friend so we get around that. So how are we going to do that? We're simply going to use this keyword friend, and then we're going to include the prototype of the function in class shapes that we want to give direct access to our stuff. So now we need to specify which class the find area belongs to, and then we're done. See the red squiggles, they disappeared. Now find area can directly access the side variable that's private in square. Okay, so classes keep a list of all of their friends. And so class squares friend here is the find area function that belongs to class shapes. So then the find area function in class shapes can directly access the private stuff in class square. So let's go ahead and test it. We'll create a square and we'll initialize it with, I don't know, 5.1. And then we'll create a shapes and we'll invoke its find area function and we'll pass it the square object as an argument. And then we'll display that on the screen. So you can see there is the area of the square. Now you can do that. You can also make standalone functions, friends of a class. So what do I mean by a standalone function? I mean a function that doesn't belong to a class. So I could do something like this. I could say uh, void update 
square. Okay, and then I'll pass to it a square reference and and we'll simply set the side to uh, 99. Now see how we got the red squiggle there again? We haven't listed this function as a friend yet. So let's go back up into class square and do that. So let's grab the header from function update square and put that right in there. And we'll make it into a little prototype here. So now as soon as we do that, see how the squiggle disappears? This update square function is now a friend of class square. So update square can access the contents of the square. So then we'll call update square and we'll pass it the square object. And then we'll call the squares get side method to show that it in fact did work. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so you can see there's the 99. And then finally, you can make an entire class a friend of a class. So if I had, say, class foo, and class foo had, as part of its public interface, its own get side method, say, double get side, and we pass it a square. Then we'll define that function to return the contents of a square's side. All right, so let's define that get side function, which belongs to class foo. And we'll name the parameter s. And it's simply going to return s.side. Now we're going to need to make it a friend. We're going to make all of class foo a friend to square. So how are we going to do that? We're going to say friend class foo. So now every function that you define in class foo is going to have direct access to the private stuff in class square. So let's go ahead and call that function. We'll instantiate a foo object, and then we'll see out what's returned by f get side, and we'll pass as an argument to it the square. And then we'll see that we were able to retrieve the contents of the side. Right? And then we can add additional functions if we wanted to to foo. Right? So we could even do something like double cube side or something like this. And then we'll pass it a square by reference. And then we'll need to define that function, provide a function definition for it. So we'll go down here. And we have to specify that this belongs to class foo. And we'll define it as simply updating side to side cubed. So side times side times side. Now let's go down here and call that f dot cube side and we'll pass it the object and then we'll print out the contents of that side variable to prove that it worked. Okay, so there's the side cubed. So 99 times 99 times 99. So to summarize, when you're giving your class friends, what you're doing is you're giving outside code direct access to your private stuff. Generally a bad idea as a rule, but sometimes rules are made to be broken and you can do it in this case. So to do so, you have to use that keyword friend and the class who is going to give access to its private stuff maintains the friend list. And don't forget about this forward declaration. So now you know how to create friends for your classes in C++.